In this video, I'm going to show a rail rider wheel swap on a 1967 Pontiac Firebird. Uh, the standard wheels are five spoke plastic wheels and well, they're okay. Um, we want to upgrade this car and make it look a little bit better. So what we'll do is remove the wheels and replace them with some uh, rail riders of the same size. So I found a set that match almost perfectly and you can see how these compare to the original wheels. And the front wheels, even though the spacing is the same, are a little bit narrower. But as you'll see, they look just fine on the car uh, once they're installed. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is drill out the rivets. Now, what I usually do is start with a uh, 1/16th diameter drill that would be a 0.062 size and I will drill out the rivet uh, just a shallow drill uh, to get a uh, starter so that my uh, larger drill bits won't walk. Usually on the newer cars it's not as bad because they do have kind of a hole in the center. I'll move to the eighth inch drill bit next which is a about the same diameter as the actual post. Well, you'll see in a minute why I do this. I drill down you know, just a little ways in uh, below the surface of the, uh, of the base on both ends. And what that'll do is leave just a slight amount of the mushroomed rivet head that I'll remove with a slightly larger drill bit. Uh, I've found that most of the newer cars you can go to about a, I believe it was 11 30 seconds diameter bit, which is just about the same size as the mushroomed head. Now you don't need to go very far here, just a slight amount, maybe one or two turns of the drill is enough to remove the uh, rest of the rivet head. Uh, once that's done, you take a look and make sure nothing's holding it back and it should uh, pop right out so in this case just grab the wheels and give it a slight tug and the base comes right out so the next thing is to remove the interior and the windshield this car with the exposed engine it's rather easy just kind of push down on the engine and uh, it pops right out Now, I always take a look at the car, and in this case we have two posts. You want to make sure that you have enough uh, depth on the post to put a full-size screw in. So I have a little gauge that I made with an old drill bit where I've marked off about the depth of the threads on my uh, screws. And in this case we have plenty of distance. So now lining up the uh, 116th bit again I drill in and you have to stop periodically and remove uh, some of the uh, burrs and the chips that are created otherwise your bit will gum up and it won't cut very well so just take your time there's no reason to rush through this as you go, you want to uh, check the depth of your hole. Obviously, you don't want to drill through the casting, but you want to make sure that you're drilling deep enough that your screw will fit properly. So, usually just take the bit, my gauge bit, and check the depth until I get it right. So, now we've drilled all the way in as deep as we need to go. Now I'm going to tap. Now I do this a little different than some people do. I use a little bit of uh, lightweight uh, machine oil 
and I will tap my hole using a stainless steel screw. I feel like this gives me a much better fit than using an actual tap and the oil just helps to keep the uh, screw threads from gumming. This isn't real easy for the first time. You have to kind of develop a technique, but I've found that once you get this process down, it's uh, rather easy to pretty much self-tap your screws into the post of your car. Um, and I should mention I use stainless steel button head screws, uh, 172 threads. I know a lot of people use 256, but I've found the 172, which is a slightly finer thread, works perfectly with a 1 16th inch uh, drill bit. So you take your time, go maybe about a half a turn on the thread, back it off about a quarter turn until you get it tapped all the way. So next thing we have to bend the plastic tabs on this base back. Um, in this case you get three tabs, fold it over, you just get your screwdriver in there and pry the tabs back. Uh, this one I've got them pried back, then just pop the axle out by prying it a little bit with a screwdriver and it should just pop right out. Then we grab our new real swap axle, make sure everything lines up. In this case looks pretty good. Then we will push it back in and fold the tabs over. So once I've locked it in place, I check, make sure my wheels are turning, base rolls nice and flat. Might put a little dab of super glue just to hold it in place. Snap the base back on, and now we're ready to screw it together. Now, with bigger posts on the newer cars, the button head screws that I use the head size is about the same size as the post, so we're going to need to use a small washer uh, that will fit over the post and give the screw something to uh, bite down on. This distributes the pressure a little more evenly on the base and uh, holds it in much better in my opinion and I think it gives it a pretty clean look. And some of the older cars like the red lines, original red lines, you you have a much smaller rivet and you can use the screw without the washer. But on the newer cars, especially the ones with the plastic bases, the the washer helps quite a bit to to take up that slack. Here I'm just showing screwing it in all the way. Once I get it snugged up, then I will uh, tighten it up. Just make sure you don't go too tight because you might risk uh, stripping the screw or uh, stripping the, uh, the hex head on the button head screw. Then I always check my wheels again, make sure nothing's binding. In this case, everything is spinning nicely. You can already tell this looks much, much better than the original wheels. We've got both screws in place, and that's pretty much it. So now I'll take the car and set it down, make sure that it rolls properly. And here's a test. As you can see, it rolls nicely. And we're done. So I may wind up adding a few details, especially to the grill and maybe the bumper and rear tail lights on this car. But I think these wheels look uh, much better than the originals.